Hello and welcome to this demo for Foursquare Studio, our next generation analytics platform for working with big geospatial data. Studio can create powerful visualizations, generate and enrich data sets, and share and publish your results all from your web browser. Let's get started. Let's go ahead and click the new map button located at the top right of the screen to jump into a project. So first we need to upload some data. You can select a file of a supported format or provide a link to a remo remotely hosted data set. In this case, I've uploaded two simple data sets, one CSV file containing uh, home sales in Melbourne and the surrounding suburbs, and another containing neighborhood boundaries. So let's click add data. So right off the bat, we can see Studio automatically plotted locations as points on the map. We can jump into Studio's layer settings over here to modify how the data is presented. For example, we could change the color based on, and we could change that to price. And we could change the radius as well. We could slide this up or down, and again, change this to price. Studio offers more than a dozen layers to choose from. We could see a full list over here. Flow layer is great for origin destination analysis. Same with the arc layer. Um, we can see there's a number of layers great, that are great for aggregate data, such as the cluster layer, the grid layer, H3, um, heat map. We also have um, layers for satellite data, such as the raster layer, and the WMS layer. The list goes on, but for now, let's head back and uh, just try a different layer type out. Let's go with a cluster layer, and let's, again, move the camera so we can modify the settings. We can change the cluster radius and pixels, change the, the color. We could change this to be based on, I don't know, the land size, right? And we could change the color scale as well. So we could do Jenks Natural Breaks for this, and modify like so. Let's head over to the Columns tab. Here, we can examine every column available in our data set. We can click More Options and View Data to see what type of data is, is inside a given column. And we can even click the Go to Table button to open our full interactive table viewer, where we can pin, sort, and generally explore any data set. A very handy option is in is right here. So we can add a new column to our data set. When you click the, the add, add column button, you're presented with an expression editor. On the left is a full list of supported expression functions, um, ranging from conversions between types, um, standard math functions, you know, some geometric functions, much more. But for now, let's write something very simple. Say, for instance, we're not interested in the raw price of a property, but instead the price per meter. We could simply type our expression um, using standard um, math notation. So we could type price, which is, uh, it'll pull the price column, and divided by the land size. And here, let me move the camera back again. You can see that we have a preview of our new column, and when both variables are present, um, it will calculate the price per meter. Let's head over to the Filters tab. Here, we can use filters to focus our analysis on a specified range. For example, you can choose to only display homes that are a certain price or more. So we could choose to start excluding some of these cheaper homes, and we can see our color scale updates along with the filter. Studio also allows you to filter by a given area. You can filter on the fly by clicking the Draw on Map button and simply let's see, just make a rectangle and we could right click and click filter on the points layer and now we're only showing points that are within our given boundary. Filtering is especially useful with temporal data. You could choose to filter this data set so it shows only homes sold within a given time frame. You can also enable playback to create an animated map. There are plenty of options available to create an optimal playback, but for now, let's just click play. We can see homes as they're listed and sold. And again, more options available. We can display time zones. We could select fields for the y-axis. We can see that the average price is, is rising. We could change the aggregation. Um, truly, there are a number of options available to us. Now let's explore an advanced feature from Foursquare Studio, spatial join. This feature allows us to combine attributes across datasets based on geospatial proximity. Using spatial join on our suburb boundary dataset with our home sale dataset, 
Um, this will allow us to create a completely new data set featuring a number of aggregated rows joined to the neighborhood polygons. Now let's start cleaning up the map and optimize it for presentation. So let's open the map legend first. The default map legend indicates the exact number each color represents, but it doesn't provide any qualitative information. You can easily click on the legend's text to add or replace it. There are also a number of interactions available to enhance the experience for your map viewers. We can customize columns that appear in the mouse over tooltip. So here we're adding the land size as well as their formatting. In this case, we're rounding up to an integer. We can add coordinates to the mouse over tooltip. So now we're looking at the exact coordinate on the map, also showing the zoom level. We can add a geocoder to the map. So in this case, if we want to ju uh, jump to, I don't know, just Melbourne City Center, we probably type in Melbourne and it'll take us there. Awesome. And we could also add brushing for supported layers, um, including point, the point layer. We can brush over and see only points that fall under our mouse over tooltip, and we can reduce the brush radius. Finally, there's annotations. When enabled, you can see I already have some here. Um, we can point out to specific locations on the map, uh, calling them out. Um, drawing attention to them. Now heading over to the base maps tab, we'll find Studio comes packed with several base maps. This allows you to add an appropriate level of context beneath your project. So while I think this map suits this project pretty well, we can head over to something like streets, which is your standard street view. Um, we can, under the maps layer section, we can um, prioritize certain elements, such as in, in this case, we want the label to appear at the top. We could hide elements. For example, we can hide the water. Um, we might not want to do that, but <laughs> we could also add a custom base map. So here, if we click new base map, we'll see that we can add a map box style, style by just providing the style URL. If you have a private map, you can also provide an access token so you can pull your private map box styles into Foursquare Studio. Studio also makes it easy to collaborate with members of your team by sharing an editable copy of the map. When we click share here, we can choose to share with our organization. Now, anyone with the studio account and access to our organization can um, edit the map, copy the map, uh, really pick up where we left off. We can also publish a map, which creates a snapshot at this given point in time and allows anyone with a link to access it. Publishing also allows your map to be embedded on your site or blog. You can also export maps and data here. So we can export an image, which is exports an image of the map, uh, what we're looking at right here. We can export data, which can export our filtered data, uh, making Studio a very handy tool for, for, um, for extracting a filtered data set. Um, you can also export the map, uh, which allows it to be loaded in um, via human readable JSON file. Or we can export a video. So our project here today just focus on the city of Melbourne. But as mentioned earlier, Studio is capable of handling large data, planetary scale projects, right? So Studio has a variety of hex tile data sets available in our catalog. So what are hex tiles? Let's, let's just take a look here. At the top level, we're looking over the entire United States. We're seeing an enormous amount of data aggregated to the top. As we scroll in, we can notice that the map becomes more defined, populating new data for each level of resolution we reach. So Let's zoom in to the city center of Chicago to, to visualize this. And you can see we could have some buildings, some building boundaries clearly defined. Whereas just a second ago, we were looking over the entire United States. And hex tiles are not just for visualization. Since they're built atop the H3 indexing system, hex tiles can be joined combined with other data sets on the fly, seamlessly unifying diverse spatial data sets. You can easily bring your data to life building beautiful maps and projects like these at studio.foursquare.com. Create your free account today and happy mapping.